Hi, one more variation on a theme as far as uh, customer loyalty and, and uh, buying philosophy. In this particular grid, down here we're just looking at what I call partner loyalty, mutual economic goodwill exchange. There's some people who just naturally are win-win, uh, give to get. Uh, the world is an expanding pie, dynamic, upside, creative people. At the other extreme, there are people who are just uh, uh, paranoid. It's a zero sum, maybe even shrinking. Uh, you know, I'm downwardly mobile. I got to get mine before the other guy gets his. Uh, you know, looking out for number one. Uh, you know, sharp elbows, uh, buy low, sell high, collect early, pay late kind of people. So that's one continuum. The other continuum is, is what is our intellectual concept, grasp, understanding of supply chain uh, building blocks. So if we start here, we're, we're going to have on the on the on the sell side of our business, we're we're going to have some customers who we just have a great trust relationship with. Now, if I went out to one of these customers and said, "Do you understand, you know, how I'm building your bottom line?" and da 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 da, da and I could I could say all this stuff, and the guy would look at me and he'd say, "Yeah, Bruce, uh, yeah, I I I I just know that." you know, you're a good value for me. In other words, I don't, I don't need to know the science of it. I just intuitively feel that you're a good guy and your heart's in the right place and I know you're taking care of me. And, and I've tried the other guys and it's not the same experience. So it's sort of a uh, from experience loyalty kind of viewpoint. Um, if I went out and said, well, look, I've got a vision which they may or may not see. And would you forward invest in it? I remember one time I explained something to a customer. He said, Bruce, I have no idea what you just told me, but whatever it is, I'm going to do it because everything you told me to do in the past has worked. And so I assume this is going to work too. It's sort of like blind loyalty, but willing to invest to take the, the relationship to a next level. When I go down and talk to these kinds of people, no matter what I say, they'd say, fine, 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 but what's your price, what's your price, what's your price? They're constantly trying to you know, play bid, bark, and buy and get a low price. And I keep trying to say, yeah, but don't you understand that, that you, know, you, you could be getting a, a better total procurement cost? And maybe in this lifetime, since they're the, 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 the final arbiter, the owner operator of a contractor business, they're just not going to get it. They're not going to buy what I'm selling in this, this lifetime. Um, moving up to this level, we find people who are all about the, themselves, you know, me first, second, and third, and they, and they understand supply chain economics, and they're going to try to impose this on everybody else and keep, let, them make, let, the, let the supplier make just enough to survive. You know, it's kind of a relationship of Sears Roebuck used to be buying from Whirlpool in 1974, Whirlpool sales were $1.4 billion of white goods, as they call them, and $1 billion of that was to Sears with the Kenmore name. And Sears tried to squeeze Whirlpool a little bit more. Whirlpool finally said, enough. You go find another billion dollars worth of white goods. Sure, you know, we're, we're, we're screwed, but so are you. In other words, it was mutual, it was mutual destruction time. So let's call these guys total procurement cost supply chain bosses. They're trying to tell us what to do and so forth. As opposed to here, you have high loyalty and you have uh, high s service value uh, thinking. Uh, I mean, a classic example here would be Ray Kroc on a handshake with the owner of Martin Brower in Chicago. Martin Brower said, we'll put up distribution centers wherever you open up burger stands and we'll take care of all of your burger stand needs on a just-in-time basis. Originally focusing, you know, just on the disposable paper goods and paper cups and things like that. But the deal was is that if Martin Brower bought better, they would share that with with McDonald's. They welched on the deal. McDonald's caught him on it, called him to the carpet and said, all right, we, we're not going to kick you out. But now it's all open book, and and we're gonna we're gonna share the synergistic stuff on the on the on the upside. So there are people like that, and I've 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 you know had the good fortune of partnering with a couple of of customers like that in just distribution channels. Now in this fifth box here, these are what I call amplifiers. Clearly, if there's a lot of volume, then we're gonna spend a lot more time with these people than if there's low volume. If we have one stop shop, you know. Uh, SKUs and we can sell them basically everything which gives us more volume but also gives us more value added I'm gonna spend a lot of time with these guys as opposed to I don't have a good fit I, I can't hope to to maintain their forward investing and their shared synergistic possibilities if I don't have a good fit 
Uh, so that's the idea of, of, of structure and fit talking about we need to be an event specialist to be perfectly tuned for for what we're trying to do with these guys so that's another look at at uh, the intersection of, of loyalty and TPC buying because in later uh, clips I'm going to just kind of gloss over some things you think oh that's all there is to it no there's a lot more and you need to get very fluent with this to have a good uh, spontaneous feel for where you are negotiating with different customers thank you